I have a Lincoln Navigator. Now listen, buddy. I don't want you getting any ideas. I'm not a rich man. Look, look at me. Look at me. Don't go, don't go tell, don't talk to people. I didn't mean to buy this. I just got the greatest deal. All right? All right? All right? I would have been an idiot not to get it. Right? Right? They, they were practically giving this away. Look, I was going to go get an F-250, but this was in the used lot. Now, now, now you listen, listen, listen. I'm not a rich man. I work for my money. 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 So I have to tow my boat and I need something, right? I'm not a rich man. They wanted they wanted Herba Gerbil, but I knew I could get them for Gerbil Bogunkel. So I snuck a picture of the salesman and I used AI to make him have gay sex with Henry Kissinger. And when they told me the final price, I said, check your printer. Then you consider the ramifications of this policy. You understand why the death is not ready to be considered in that matter. I used a flipper zero to make it print out on all the office printers. Don't tell the other boat dads that I know how to use technology or they'll call me a rich man. I'm, I'm not a rich man. My wife is in a coupon club and gets $100 a month in savings from over-the-counter medication. I'll tell you, I love how comfortable my navigator is, but I'm not a rich man. I'm taking a big enough risk driving a truck like that. It's a truck. It's a truck. It's a truck. It's a truck. I'm calling this a truck. It's not an SUV. SUVs are for rich men. I'm taking a big enough risk driving a truck with massaging seats. When my dock bros get in, I tell them that half the stuff in here doesn't work before their size 48 waistlines meet the leather seats. That's my levy holding back the high tide of must-be-nice insultments I know are backed up inside their essential congressional district heads. Now, now right now, they're giving me the, oh, here comes Tony Soprano, and, and that's fine. If that's as far as their ribbon goes, we're fine. But let me tell you, listen, but if it goes farther... I'll look right at Richard Melcrest. He always stands in the middle of them. Clean jeans, Richard Melcrest, right. And I'll say, hey, Dick. He hates that. Hey, Dick, how about that Allstate? Richard bought Allstate Insurance, New York Stock Exchange, ALL, on June 1st at $109 a share and sold it at $138 a share on Tuesday, December 5th. Richard didn't think anyone saw that trade when we were all at Ash and Cigar Bar in Philly. We are all smoking $40 cigars and saying how much we work for our money and must be nicing the group of Philly cops who came in and uh, bought some boxes in the walk-in humidor. Richard forgot to lock his phone when he went to put out the fire, and I kept him distracted by making fire engine sounds with my mouth as he walked to the commode. Then I saw his phone, and his Charles Schwab app was open, and, oh, he made money. He's the rich man. Not me. Not me. Not me. I'm not a rich man. He's the rich man. Richard Melcrest is the rich man. Not me. My son that goes to UPenn. Not a rich man. Not a rich man. I'm 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 not a rich man. Today's episode of Regular Car Reviews is sponsored by Factor. Factor makes meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. Factor supports wholesome eating made simple. Their menus are uploaded weekly and include 27 plus meals and 33 add on options. They offer keto, calorie smart, chef's choice, vegan plus, veggie options, which include seafood, meat, and plant based meals. Factor is one of the few microwavable dinners that honestly gets pasta right. And I'm kind of echoing uh, Stav mm, from Stavi's World, huge fan by the way, that he said that, and I'm like, oh, he's right. This is, this pasta tastes like the pasta you would get at a restaurant. And you're like, this came out of the microwave? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's really good. How about I double team coffee and the tropical fruit factor? Can I do this without making a mess? Wait, double team the tropical fruit, <laughs> the smoothie, and coffee at the same time? Oh, exquisite. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code REGULAR50 to get 50% off your first factor box. Once again, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code REGULAR50 to get 50% off your first factor box. Why does this car exist? Is it really just a case of trying to capture the luxury SUV market? 
and eventually becoming the official car of concealed carry Carl and his doc daddy friends. Because the Navigator is that bizarre gray area between truck and SUV where eh, it's technically an SUV, but feels more like a truck. And yet it doesn't feel enough like a truck to avoid being classed as an SUV. Maybe that's the point, to not comfortably fit in any particular demographic, even as it continues to be classified as a luxury SUV. I mean, it's the heaviest production Lincoln. It has the biggest cargo capacity. It's the first Lincoln to seat six people without being a limousine, and yes, I'm reading this off the Wikipedia because that's all the research this deserves. Because this is a Ford Expedition. Even after the 2015 refresh, where Ford said the next Navigator wouldn't just be a repackaged Expedition, it still kept most of the Expedition's styling. But then came the fourth generation, and now Ford took the styling cues from the Expedition and incorporated some Lincoln Continental vibes, and threw it on the Ford T3 platform they were using, and equipped it with the same 3.5 twin-turbo EcoBoost V6 as the Raptor. The Navigator has never really been its own thing. It's always been cobbled together from concepts, design cues, and engineering from other cars within the same family. And yes, that's the case with loads of cars. But the Navigator feels strangely orphaned. A car with very little of its own. Just clothes and toys it has to share with its siblings. Lincoln can differentiate itself by not opting to use the EcoBoost name, and tout this as the highest output engine in any Lincoln ever sold, making 450 horsepower and 510 foot-pounds of torque. But is that the same thing as being unique? Because no matter what, it's still a Ford underneath all this accessible opulence. And you're just waiting for the other shoe to drop because it's a Ford. You better not skip any oil changes. These 3.5 twin-turbo EcoBoost V6s do not tolerate abuse. Every 3,000 miles, you're changing the oil. I don't care what AMS oil says. 3,000 miles, you're changing the oil. These things like to spin bearings, cook camshafts, all sorts of stuff. Those little oil squirters for the crank, they're tiny. They're so, so tiny. They clog. And then you're going to oil starve parts of the engine. I mean, derivations of this engine have been used in uh, police interceptors. And they're always wearing them out. And as I'm driving this, I'm thinking, this is fantastic. When's it going to turn into a Ford? Where's the cheapness going to come out? Because everything in here is nice to touch. This is a very, very high quality product from Ford. It moves. It kind of darts. You have confidence in this thing. I mean, I didn't turn off the massaging seats the entire time. You're driving around for a long time and your mm -hmm. legs are starting to hurt and your back's starting to hurt. And that can get you the next rest stop. Nice. And it's heated too, and air conditioned because you got heat and air, and the heat will burn your ass. It gets hot. Nice. Though. It's massaging my upper back, lower back, and my butt, and then just keep it on my butt and just massage my butt. I kind of want to be pegged sometime in my life. And then the stopping power is even better. But how opulent is it really? It's as if Ford said, let's create an expedition for a guy who owns a bunch of antique guns but doesn't know what a loaf of bread costs anymore. This here isn't even stealth wealth. It's wealth shame. It's coming from money. Or getting this used but not wanting the dock fathers to look at you differently. It's like damn near every domestically made luxury SUV. It wants to give off that air of European luxury, but not at the expense of American familiarity. Lincoln Navigator L. Brought to you by... I don't like rap music. Lincoln Navigator L. The official car of visibly doing years of favors, donations, and community events because you believe that getting an end pass is real. Lincoln Navigator. Brought to you by... I'm doing everything right! I just want one! When the first Lincoln Navigator was released in 1998, it was part of a bandwagon in the American auto industry since the Jeep Grand Wagoneer got people convinced there was a market for luxury SUVs. Never mind that the Range Rover had been around forever by that point, but that didn't speak to the kind of American who still wears blue jeans as he watches a guy named Roberto trim his hedges from the cloistered safety of his living room where the only law is the back of his hand. And maybe the companies were right to try and build this market from twigs and tinder. 
but the market wasn't going to sustain everybody making them. GM spread the butt cheeks of capitalistic apathy and squeezed out a sad man's convoy that included garbage like the Oldsmobile Bravada. And then Toyota said, me too, and we got the Lexus LX. And then Mercedes says, don't forget about the Germans. And now here's the M class. Cadillac said, what about me? And we got the eternal Escalade. And somewhere between the Lexus and the Escalade, Ford says, it's not a party until the withering seed of American exceptionalism has exploded all over the room like a piano filled with Newports. And I guess the thought behind luxury SUVs was the right one, because it's still here. The Lincoln Navigator survives, and I'll see you in the hood in 20 years. Even as it feels more and more redundant year after year. And look, there's nothing all that wrong with it. It's a perfectly fine large car. In fact, it feels more powerful than the factory rating suggests. It claims 450 horses, but uh, it's probably more like 500. I mean, maybe? Even as it shares the same engine as the 600 horsepower Raptor. So what gives? The Lincoln Navigator L weighs 6,800 pounds. 6,800 pounds? So you think it should at least take like six and a half seconds, even with this power to go zero to 60, but factory says five and a half. Here's that power you were talking about, rolling on at 15 miles an hour. Yep. Oh, it gets its second wind at 55. Yeah. There it is. It keeps going. It keeps going. It's not slowing down. It's like, there's shifting. Keep going. The turbos could light back up. Yeah. So you're going to be working with more than 450, right? I mean, maybe the all-wheel drive system helps it dig in? I can't even get a straight answer from other sources. For example, Car and Driver had this thing doing a quarter mile in 14.2 seconds. It's deceptively unusual for something that looks as straightforward as it does. It'd be interesting to get this thing up on the dyno to see what it really could do. But this isn't really fun or exciting in the way the best trucks can be or even a very good SUV could be. It's just fine. It's easy to drive. It's very easy. In fact, it's too easy. It's, it's like it thinks you got your driver's license from a PennDOT DMV in one of the lesser counties. You can't fully turn off collision warning, and this auto brakes excessively. It's essentially a car for drunk drivers. For crying out loud, it'll practically park itself. It is also aware of its overhangs and how low stuff hits. Mm -hmm. So if you approach a parking guard that's above a certain height, it will beep you for that too. Someone ran into a Wawa post mm -hmm. in whatever truck that they had. And, you know, they didn't see it. Yeah. Because it's, you know, Wawa posts aren't really high. They're really not. And, and they just drove right into it. And it was, uh, it was one of those nature building a better idiots. Like, my truck should have saw this and why does Wawa build them so low? <laughs> It was a combination. You know, they had like a King Ranch or something yeah. like that. Well, I mean, why does anyway. why did Wawa ever stop making the hot roast beef sandwiches? <laughs> like, why does Wawa do anything? You get integrated trailer control and a 1,900 pound payload capacity. It basically has all the features you can get without going black label. And I forget what reference I was making there. I think it was a whiskey reference. Anyway, I think the idea that Ford was going for here they wanted to offer you something that is extensively optioned because if they do that, you won't really notice its Fordness. Lincoln Navigator, sponsored by Doc Daddies who run a construction company out of Lower Possum Township using company funds on chewing tobacco and lawn signs for candidate of choice. And God bless him. He still finds time to come home, to shower, shave, and put holes in the drywall. Lincoln Navigator, for the blue-collar man who convinces himself he deserves a reward. And why not? He puts food on the table and cum stains on the couch, like any God-fearing American with a decent enough rack of disposable income that he doesn't want to dispose of entirely. After all, that's how he became well off. He holds on to his money in ways he never held on to people. But don't you dare lump him in with those suit-wearing vultures at Dire Straits Federal Credit Union with their Audis and their daytime game show haircuts. I paid $47,000 for this. That's over $10,000 below an NDA. I'm still the same guy, 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 guy. I take my pants off the same as you. Lying on the back of my bed while my wife pulls them off both legs at the same time.
Look, we joke, but the truth of the matter is there's nothing wrong with being comfortable. You find you can afford something like this? And it meets all of your needs? Go for it. Even if you wind up getting judged for it. Are they your wife? Are they your family? Are they people who really matter? Are they you? Because there are very few people in our lives whom we should allow a voice in our decision making. And too often, we give that resource to people who shouldn't have it, rather than the people we can trust to know who we really are, deep down. Have a nice week.